a lot of cities, you're allowed to turn right at a red light. But remember, it's an option, not an obligation. If it's allowed where you drive and you decide to do it, make sure to come to a complete stop before doing so. Then make sure to advance until you see enough to both sides, check all around before and give priority to whoever has it, and do your verifications before turning. Basically, when turning right at a red light, you're last in terms of priority. Be aware also of vehicles coming in the opposite direction that are turning to their left. Sometimes they have a green arrow that allows them to turn left, while the light is red for those that want to go straight, just like we have on our side here. You can still turn at the same time as them if you have enough room, but beware, especially when bigger vehicles are turning, like this bus here. Because they are larger, they might overflow into your lane. So in this case, my best bet is to wait until the bus turns and go after. Also, even if allowed in your city, it might not be allowed at every intersection, especially at the busiest ones. So if you see a panel like this one, it means that you can turn right at a red at this particular intersection. Here's something that sometimes causes confusion with students when turning right at a yield. The lights in front are not for you. They're for the people who want to go straight or turn left. In this case, only straight because you can turn left. What you need to respect though is the yield. So that means that if there's somebody coming from the left, you need to yield to them. If not, and if there are no other users that have priority over you, you can go without stopping. There are two main types of yields, ones that are shared and ones that are reserved. In the ones that are shared, the vehicle exiting the yield shares the same lane with the vehicle that's coming from the left. These are the ones you'll see most of the time. On ones that are reserved, the vehicle exiting the yield will have its own lane. Usually in these ones, the yield lane and the second lane from the right are separated by a solid line in order to prevent people coming from the left lane to change lanes to the right. You'll still need to check to the left though, in case the driver coming at your left wants to change lanes to the right and doesn't respect the solid line. And it does happen. Now one of the most confusing things with students and even experienced drivers is to what side you need to signal at a yield. Before entering the yield, you signal to the right because you want to indicate to the people behind you that you want to turn right or go into the yield and not go straight. But when exiting the yield, you want to signal to the people coming from your left. In other words, when entering a yield, you're turning right. When exiting the yield, you're changing lanes to the left. In a smaller yield, it might not make too much sense to you. But in a longer one like this one, it makes more sense. At the beginning of the yield, it's a curve. So you have the impression of turning right, which you are. But as you approach the exit and the lane straightens, it'll feel more like you're changing lanes to the left than turning to the right. Think of it as like entering a highway. That's what it is, a yield. A very long yield, but a yield nonetheless. And when entering a highway, you flash to the left and it makes sense. It's also to be more visible to the vehicles on your left. Most vehicles have signal lights on the sides also, so they're more visible in a diagonal position like this one, especially at night or on darker days. Now here's something that causes a few failures at the exam. People are used to having a yield whenever approaching a diagonal stretch like this one, but sometimes it's a stop sign. Since the two panels are red and white, they sometimes just get a quick glimpse of a red and white panel, confuse it with a yield, and they don't stop completely. And that's usually a failure at the exam. So be sure to check the panel carefully. If it's a stop, you must stop completely, even if there's no one. Another common mistake with students is that they sometimes swerve too much to the left before turning right. And the reason for that is that they're scared to hit the sidewalk. I call this doing the truck because that's what big vehicles like trucks and buses do sometimes when turning. And sometimes they don't have the choice. If they don't do it, they won't be able to turn. They need to do that in order to have the right angle to enter their lane. Side note. If you're behind the truck waiting to turn right, like here, this is what you should do. Don't squeeze yourself between the truck and the sidewalk. You might not be able to turn. So stay behind it and wait until it turns. Now, if you're driving a normal sized vehicle, unless turning in a very tight street, you won't need to do the truck. Most streets are built to accommodate the vehicle's width. This is also a potential failure at the exam, because if you swerve too much to the left, the examiner might grab your steering wheel. So just stay centered in your lane normally and don't focus on the sidewalk when turning. 
focus on where you want to go. If you're turning in a very tight space, you can move a bit to the left inside your own lane if you have enough room to do so, like I showed in my last video, but make sure you don't do it too much. Next video will be one that you've been requesting for a long time, parallel parking in a tight spot. So only a couple of days left in 2018. It's been a good year for me thanks to you, almost 300,000 subscribers. So big thanks for your support and your beautiful comments and keep the suggestions coming. I wish you all a very happy 2019 and I'll see you then. Cheers.